So I heard people wanted more chaotic Pokemon challenges for me. Well, I got your back. I'm Razor Middle, and welcome on into quite possibly the most painful 18 hours of Pokemon gaming I've had to endure. Before we go any further though, be sure to smack that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, leave me a comment, and all that stuff. I never actually plan on releasing this video just because of all the torture I'd have to revisit, edit, and present to the interweb to judge, but here we are. I figured, well, it's been six months since I did this playthrough, I might as well use the game footage for something. I guess you can consider this a lost episode of the Pokemon challenges I've done, but I say we just get this dumpster fire of a playthrough started and see if I can beat Pokemon Shield only using in-game trade Pokemon. I don't know who needs to hear this, but an in-game trade Pokemon is a Pokemon only obtainable via trading with an NPC in the game. Riveting information there. So in Pokemon Shield, there's a total of 9 in-game trades, and to obtain these Pokemon, you need to catch the Pokemon a person is asking for, then the trade is initiated. You then obtain some very oddly nicknamed Pokemon, and when I say oddly nicknamed, I mean oddly nicknamed, and for the sake of this playthrough, I'm just going to keep the nicknames for the fun of it. For clarity's sake though, I'll put the nicknames of the Pokemon in the description in case anyone gets confused or just wants to keep track of the Pokemon I'm talking about. With that said though, here are the rules of the challenge. I guess I also have no one to blame for it myself or how hard this is, but I digress. The rules are as follows. I am only allowed to use Pokemon obtainable via in-game trades. Catching the Pokemon required to initiate the trade is allowed, otherwise this wouldn't even be a video and you just continue on with your day. I'm going to allow myself to use a max of 3 Pokemon on my team at all times, and I'll be rotating out team members depending on the battles ahead. Then for the giggles of it, if the Pokemon I obtained from a trade has stats over 500, or its evolution stats are over 500, then I'm forcing myself not to use it. Why you may ask? Because I like pain! Then if that wasn't bad enough, I'm not allowed to use items in battle, only held items. Then obviously here no hacking or glitches are allowed to help me beat the game either. Now with all my rambling done, grab your cameras and let's watch a train wreck happen in real time. The game begins with your typical intro. We're introduced to the world, meet our rival, and see a Wooloo ramming itself into a gate which is basically me on any given day. Because the first in-game trade isn't until we get to Moto Stoke, I progress to the game with a score bunny who I immediately yeet given the chance. I catch a Squobat in the wild area as soon as possible, then head over to Moto Stoke with Hop and Sonya where I meet the NPC in the Pokemon Center who will be our first trade. Haley, the NPC, requests a Bunnelby for a Squobat, so we trade and get ourselves Cheekers to add him to the team. We meet back up with Hop and register for the Gym Challenge, where an Angie boy in pink makes his presence known. After all that, it's getting pretty late, so we head over next door to the hotel for some shut-eye, and Sonya tells us some long, boring history lesson. I guess that is one way to put us to sleep. But for real though, before we can check in, some hooligans named Team Yell cause some chaos in the lobby, and we beat them up. Then the girl who they're all cheering for, Marnie, a fellow gym challenger, tells them to chill and they all disperse. The next day rolls around and it's time for the opening ceremony where we meet all the region's gym leaders minus one and afterwards get acquainted with Chairman Rose who's in charge of everything. Outside the city on our way to our next destination, Hop challenges us to a battle and Cheekers gets wrecked. Alright guys, here comes the pain. I'm basically going to keep a death counter now to just give you guys some insight on why this took me six months to post on YouTube. In the rematch, I leveled up Cheekers just a little bit more and I was able to barely squeak by with the win. Then after being stopped every two seconds by a trainer, Sonia, or a wild Pokemon, we finally get into Galarmine number one and make our way through the cave. At the very end of the cave, that Angie boy from the gym challenge registration stops us for a battle. His name is Bead, and honestly, he just seems like he needs a hug. Don't worry, I got you dude, you just had to ask. Then after our nice hug, it's time to battle, and despite Cheekers having Bite, which is super effective, we lose to Bead one, two, three, four times. I honestly just say screw it and overlevel him, even though that means there's a chance he won't obey me since it's a traded Pokemon. Cheekers evolves into Greta, and we finally grab the win, and outside the cave we catch a Galarian Meowth for our next trade. Before we can do that though, Milo and everyone's favorite fluffy bean Wooloo introduce themselves, and then Sonya gives us some more history lessons that we didn't ask for. In Turfield now, we go into the gym and trade with Mattia to obtain Cash, the Cantonian Meowth. We wrangle up some woos for the gym mission, then head out to the field where Cheekers is able to stall long enough that we knock out Milo's first Pokemon and survive a few Dynamax attacks before he ultimately faints. With Eldegloss no longer Dynamax, we Dynamax Cash and we're able to finish it off with one Max Strike. Milo gives us a fancy little badge, and with our first badge in the books, it's now time to continue the adventure. We head through Route 5 and rescue some dude from Team Yell shenanigans, and in return we're given a brand new bike. Afterwards, I forgot like a dummy to catch our next Pokemon, so I ran down the hill and chucked a Pokeball at Mencino's face. Then on the bridge, Hop and I face off in another battle, but beforehand, I make sure to level up so I don't get my butt whooped again. Cheekers is able to lead us off and take down each of Hop's Pokemon, but we were doing pretty good so even if Cheekers fainted, Cash was ready to fight. 
In Holbury now, Chairman Rose clearly didn't look in a mirror before going outside today, and Oleana wasn't a very good assistant for not mentioning that monstrosity of an outfit to him. I mean, come on my dude, polka dot shorts and no socks with your shoes? Blink once if you need help, I'm here for you. Regardless, after we're done talking, I run down to the little marketplace in town and meet up with Garcia the NPC and give her my Mincino. In exchange, I obtain Candy Floss the Cottony. I told you guys these nicknames were ridiculous. But, but, I can't really complain though, because Candy Floss has the perfect typing to go against this city's water type gym leader, Nessa. We meet up with Nessa outside by the lighthouse, then head into the gym and partake in the gym mission. No major road bumps along the way, thank god, and I make my way out to the field. I lead with Cheekers just because it has the level advantage, and that'll save Candy Floss's super effective moves for last if we need them. Nessa's Goldeen and Aracuda are easily handled with some body slams and bites, and Cheekers only has lost a quarter or so health. She Dynamaxes her Dreadnought, but I pass in order to stall using the same strategy as last gym. With two Pokemon in reserve, I feel good about this, and I was right, as Cheekers was able to make it through all three turns before fainting on the last one. Out comes Candy Floss now, and I Dynamax against her Dynamax. Max less, Dreadnought. One Max Overgrowth quickly manages it and we obtain the second badge. Trust me y'all, I promise it's gonna get worse, these early gym leaders are just pretty easy. Sonia and I accompany Chairman Rose to a dinner with apparently no dinner, and I'm left wondering when do we ever eat in Pokemon games. Then while we're nearby, I run back to the Route 5 where the nursery's at and I get a Toxel for free, which I'll store for a future trade later. Looping back and over to Gallarmine number 2 now, Bead confronts us and challenges us to a battle because apparently he likes beating me up. I guess our hug session didn't work. This time I'm in a pretty good position now, having 3 Pokemon on my team and of higher level, so the battle actually works in my favor and I win. Then Hop and I deal with a little team yell mayhem, meet the next gym leader Kabu, and I leave the cave and head back to Motostoke for gym number 3. But it is nighttime, so I first head to the hotel where Marnie wants to battle and Cheekers handles things all by himself. Morning comes and we go inside the gym and do the gym mission, which requires us either catching or beating the Pokemon to earn 5 points to advance. I could've just caught these Pokemon here and released them later since I really can't use any, but I decided to beat them all for more experience instead. Then when the battle with Kabu begins, I lead with Cheekers since he's a tank and I'm able to knock out his Ninetales, but Cheekers is burned and loses to his Arcanine next. I throw out Cash to help try and knock out his Arcanine since Candy Floss is obviously not going to be of any help, and I knock out the Arcanine and throw out Candy Floss to stall against his G-Max Scorch. Candy Floss poisons his Scorch, and Kabu is a Dingbat and uses a bug move on Candy Floss, so we're actually able to survive one hit. With only Cash left and still at full health, I Dynamax him and use G-Max Rockfall which is 4 times super effective. With one huge smack, Scorch gets yeeted and I earn my third gym badge. Following this victory, our access to the wild area expands and I go exploring before heading up to Hammerlock. I make a quick stop to the digging duo and spend my watts to try and earn a shiny stone, and I eventually get one. I immediately evolve Candy Floss into Whimsicott, then head to Hammerlock where I initiate our next trade with the NPC Holly where I give her a Toxel for Snips the Togepi. I'm going to store it away for now, but it may come in handy later. That's to be determined though, since I can't evolve it into Togekiss with the rules I made for myself. Now other than a bunch of story dialogue I have to sit through, I waste no time running into our next destination once I leave Hammerlock. I beat Team Yell along with Hop, meet a nice old lady named Opal who gives us her lead card, and I head on my merry way through the desert to the next city. Along the way I catch two Pokemon because there's two trades coming up. I catch a Maractus and Galarian Yamask to trade for an Impidimp and a Unovian Yamask. I'll get to the Amass trade a little later, but the Impotent's nickname is Peepers. We evolve Peepers into Morgrum before we do a quick battle with Hop and head into the gym. The battle with Hop is uneventful other than giving Peepers some battle experience, as is the gym mission. And here comes the pain of the playthrough, people. I lost to Alistair, count them, eight times, despite being nearly ten levels higher. In my defense though, I don't have the best group of mons to deal with this gym, but Cheekers of all Pokemon help carry us over the finish line. A few crunches helped take down his G-Max Gengar, and I didn't even need a Dynamax in the battle I ended up winning. Alistair gives us the gym badge, and I run myself as fast as I can out of that gym to try to forget about all the destruction he just put my team through. Thanks for the nightmares, both literally and figuratively, Alistair. After I skedaddle out of there, Sonia invites us up to the Stoneside mural where Bede is trying to destroy it. We battle him to make sure he cuts out his madness, and I make quick work of his psychic type. After I win, Chairman Rose revokes his gym challenger status since he was trying to destroy ancient stuff. With the story portion finished, I quickly go through the Glimwood Tangle and into Balanlea where I trade the Galarinia Mask away to the NPC trainer Eve. We get the beautiful and one of a kind Masky the Yamask, which I evolve into Kafagrigus. What an amazing name, truly quality stuff right there people. I go through the gym mission and of all places to lose, I actually lose to one of the trainers Gardevoir. Oh lord, if that isn't any indication of how this gym battle is gonna go, then I I don't know what is. 
After a rematch, which I finally win, I head out to the field and meet up with Opal, the fairy type gym leader. And guess how many times I lost? Drum roll, please. Nine times. Nine times. I lost nine times. This was just depressing, to be honest. Not only were my Pokemon overleveled, but I also rotated in different Pokemon after some weren't faring so well against her team. It really didn't matter if Cheekers, Masky, Cash, Peepers, Snips, or Candy Floss was on my squad. Opal really had a counter for everything since her team consisted of dual types. Added with that is the fact that the move pools of my Pokemon weren't all that great either. I think you know it's bad when I just started letting Snips use Metronome because I had just given up and said screw it at that point. But in all seriousness, in the battle I actually ended up winning, my team was Snips, the Togetek, Maskey, the Cofagrigus, and Cash, the Persian. Maskey and Cash did the bulk of the work here with Snips being used more so for stalling rather than its moveset. It came down to my Dynamax Cofagrigus versus her G-Max Alcremie and two Max Phantasms clutched the win for us. Opal asked us to accompany her back to Hammerlock, so of course we help the old lady cross the street because that's a good thing to do. When we finally get back to Hammerlock, Opal kidnaps Bead because they obviously shop at the same store and they go off training together or something. Hop and I then have a battle outside on the bridge where I'm able to pull out the victory, but let's be real here, I was obnoxiously overleveled because of Opal's gym, so things were much easier. We then go through Route 8, avoiding every Pokemon and trainer as possible because I truly cannot be bothered, and we enter the tundra city known as Surchester. I caught a Vanillish for a trade we have here in the city and we get ourselves Blue Bop the Sock from an NPC named Grim. Blue Bop's definitely going to come in handy here for this next gym as we head into Sir Chester Stadium to take on Melanie. I painfully make my way through the most annoying gym puzzle ever created and I finally get out to the field. The gym battle is decently challenging as Cheekers and Cash go down, but Blue Bop pushes us to victory destroying her Lapras. We shake hands, get our sixth gym badge, then head on out. Sonia, Hop, and I meet at a local restaurant to chit chat before Hop and I partake in yet another battle which I win easily. Outside the city, we once again help out the doctor dude being harassed by Team Yell, and as a reward for saving them, they upgrade our bike which now allows us to ride on water. We swim across the icy water and walk up and over to Spike Muth where Marty sneaks us in the back but not before we battle. In our first battle, yes, I said first battle, I lose because I completely forgot to heal up my team and we went in already hurt. You know guys, that one's on me. I take full responsibility for that loss right there. In our rematch with the fully healed team, we're much better off and our team is no match for us. But one last thing before we take on the gym here in the city, I fly back to the wild area and catch a Obstagoon for our last eligible trade of the playthrough. I catch my dude Obstagoon and trade it away back in Spike Muth for Mimo the Cantonian Mr. Mime. I then make my way through this dumpster town, beat some team yell grunts before arriving at the gym for our front row rock concert, and a gym battle too, of course. This is probably the easiest major battle of the entire game thus far, and I make quick work of his team. Being a Dynamaxless fight as well made this all the more easier, not having to worry about stalling Pierce's ace Pokemon. Coupled with this was the typings of the Pokemon we've collected thus far. Having multiple fairy Pokemon and a fighting type Pokemon made this battle an under 5 minute fight. After our gym battle outside Spike Muth, there's some commotion. However, Leon the Champion takes care of things for us, and we don't have to worry. Or do we? <laughs> Well, I guess more on that mess later, no spoilers for now. Anywho, we return to Hammerlock for our 8th and final gym where we take on Rayhan in a double battle. The battle begins and I lead off with Bluebop and Peepers, whereas Gigalith and Flygon are each taken down. The only problem with this fight is really having to deal with the effects of Sandstorm, but as his final two Pokemon come out, we're still in good health. I double team Rayhan's G-Max Duraldin, that way we can get it off the field and have a 2 on 1 advantage with this final Pokemon. We make quick work of his Sandaconda and pull out the win to earn our final gym badge. After the gym battle, Sonya gets promoted to Galar's official Professor, and Hop and I make our way to Winden, home of the Pokemon League, via a train ride. First, we have to travel through wind and snow, but eventually we get to Winden and immediately go off to the stadium for battle. The first battle of this tournament is against our friend Marnie, who we have good typings to go against, which should make this easy. With no deaths and very minimal damage, Blue Bop is able to knock out her whole team with close combat and brick break, plus some Dynamax moves. Up next in the tournament, and our final battle of day one, is Hop, who we once again easily defeat. Blue Bop and Cheeker swapped in and out to take turns, but Cheeker is eventually faints against Hop's Dynamax. Max Rillaboom. That brings out Cash next to us full health, and Rillaboom is taken down and advances us to the next portion of the Pokemon League tournament. After the battle, Leon promises to take Hop and I out for dinner, but when the time rolls around for dinner, he's nowhere to be found. We learn he's up at Rose Tower here in Winden, but a pesky and rather annoying League staffer has to chase him all around town to get the key for us to enter. We finally get the key and join Marty and Hop in heading up to Rose Tower with a lovely and lively distraction from Piers. Since most of the grunts have steel types, Blue Bop easily manages this section of the game, 
game before we head up to the top of the tower and battle Oleana. Oleana is also trying to stop us from seeing Leon and Chairman Rose, and in our battle, I lose six times. I tried different combos of teams, which included Mimo, Blue Bop, and Cheekers, but in the end, the team that led us to victory was Maskey, Cash, and Peepers. We do take some heavy damage from our squad of Pokemon, but in the end, two Max Mindstorms finish off our G-Max Garboder, and we finally move on with the game. We meet up with Leanne and Chairman Rose, who assure us everything is fine, despite the fact that everyone just expelled all their energy trying to stop us from getting here, but we're getting free food from Leanne, so we ignore it and get going. It's now time for day two of the tournament, and the finals begin to see who gets the chance to face Leon the champion. Our first battle was supposed to be against Nessa, but Bead interrupts as the new gym leader of Bao and Leia, replacing the retiring Opal. We have an unofficial battle with him as his team of fairy and psychic Pokemon are taken down with ease, just like every other battle we've had with him. Except for that first battle we had with him in Gallarmine number one, we don't talk about that one. Then with that sideshow out of the way, the real finals begin and Nessa comes out to battle with us. I make some adjustments to the team and bring along Cash, Candy Floss, and Cheekers. Nessa's team of water types are handled by Cash, who has Thunderbolt in his arsenal. Then I throw out a fully healthy Candy Floss to go against her G-Max Dreadnought. If four times super effective Max Overrow one-shots the Dreadnought and we go on to our next battle. Alistair comes out next to follow and our team consists of Cash, Cheekers, and Maskey. In hindsight, this was probably not a good team to bring with me since we had other options and I ended up losing. In a rematch though, I substitute Cheekers for Peepers, which is something I really should have done the first time. But I actually lose again with this new team, then decide to make adjustments to the health items each Pokemon is holding. I slap an Eevee Light on Peepers to boost its defense and special defense to deal with Alistair's G-Max Gengar, and this ends up being the right choice as we pick up the victory. Then in the final battle of the tournament, we go against Rayhan, but this time it's a singles battle, not a double battle. My team in this battle is Blue Bop, Peepers, and Cash, who can each deal with at least one Pokemon in Rayhan's team with the move pools they have. His Torkoal, Turtonator, and Gudra are handled by Peepers and Blue Bop, but Peepers does feign against his Flygon. Then after Cash shakes down his Flygon, his Duraludon knocks out Cash, and I'm left with only Blue Bop left. One close combat finishes off the little bit of health his Duraludon has left, and we advance to the Champions Cup finale against Leon. When we go out for the battle with Leon, we are so rudely interrupted by Chairman Rose, who decides to blow up the world, which means we have to go save the day. We go back to Hemrock, where we meet with Chairman Rose doing some evil stuff, and we initiate a battle to stop him. And for the first time in one of these challenge videos, I think this is the only time I didn't lose to Chairman Rose. It's possible I beat him before on the first try, but knowing me, I probably lost him in all of my other videos. I can't really remember. But let's be real here though, this was easy because I had a fighting type on my team against all of his steel types, so I easily managed to beat him, only having to use Blue Bob. Then on the roof, Eternatus is summoned, and Hop, Leon, and I are able to stop the madness with the help of Zacian and Zamazenta. We catch the Eternatus as required, but we're not allowed to use it of course, so we save the day no matter what. Now with the world back in order and Chairman Rose gone, the final battle between Leon and I is ready to happen. So you already know what's about to happen, I lose a grand total of... get ready for it guys seven times. I eventually just leveled up my Pokemon to level 100 so we could finally get the win, but my god was it still tough. I switched around my team many times to try different strategies, but eventually decided on using Blue Bop, Peepers, and Cash, all holding items that would help boost their prowess in battle. We get through most of his team before his Dragapult and G-Max Charizard gave us the most issues. In the end, we were finally able to pull out the win and beat Leon, completing our challenge to see if we can beat Pokemon Shield with only in-game trades. Phew, my goodness, was this quite the challenge to get through, and revisiting this footage six months later and make into a video was certainly a unique experience. I will say that with challenge comes reward, so never giving up in one of these challenge videos no matter how many times you get destroyed is the most important part. Let me know what you thought of this challenge video and if there's any other challenge videos you'd like to see, especially with new Pokemon coming out in the Crown Tundra. I'd love to hear any and all feedback, so let me know. Also be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications so you don't miss any future shenanigans that comes out here on the channel. With all that said though, I am Razor Middle, this has been a whirlwind of an adventure, and I'll see you later for alligators.